It's a new dawn. It's a new day. And I'm feeling good. Amen. Let me say it one more time because I don't believe you got it them first two. It's a new dawn. Because birds are flying high. When I woke up this morning, I walked out to the barn, and the sun came up over the top of the barn and said his mercies are new every morning. It was a new dawn. It was a new day. And I'm feeling good because I know that something new is about to take place in this house. Teresa said, she said, you go up there. You're the yes, and we're the amen. So I want to say yes, and you say I say yes. Amen. That's it. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. And I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Can you say I'm feeling good? Some of you have been feeling poorly. But it's a day to feel good. Glad to see you, Rodney. Rodney's been feeling bad. But he's feeling good this morning. Amen. I have been working every single day of this new year. To try to change my thought process of where I came from in 2020. Amen. Teresa said last week, she said, you know, we, we used 2020 as a, an escape goat. As a scapegoat. We said, oh, I had a flat tire. <laughs> 2020. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. My message this morning is sing out a new song. And I want you to stay with me this morning because I got it for you this morning. I got something for you this morning. Amen. Let me tell you something this morning. There is a promise for me and for you that in my life and your life, this is it. A new day will come. Amen. A new day will come. Will you say it with me? Say, a new day, a new day. Will, come will come for me and my family and my situation. A new day. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 9, it says this. Don't grow weary in well-doing, for you shall reap in due season if you don't faint. You don't faint. Then the Lord reminded me of, of David, who cried out to the Lord and found his hope and his salvation. Now, I want you to look what he said here in Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and, and he heard my cry. He also brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock. He established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and trust in the Lord. He has took me out of where I was and brought me to where I is, and he ain't through with me yet. And he's put a new song in my heart and a new song in my mouth. That's redemption. Now, there are songs we sing when we're in the pit. And in Psalm 40, if you study that psalm, David sang some songs when he was in a rough place. But there are songs that we sing when we stand on the rock of ages. And today I want to sing a new song. Psalm 144, 9 says, I will sing a brand new song to you, my God. I will sing a brand new song. Because here's your thing. The God on the mountain. Come on now. What's the song? Because the God on the mountain. He's the God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right. For the God of the good times is still the God in the bad times. And the God of the day is still the God in the darkest night. You see, we sing a song when we're in a pit. But we need to begin to sing that song today when we're standing on the rock. We've been in the pit. Songs come from different perspectives. They express different messages and different purposes. When we're lost and without hope, our, our, our primary focus is our own situation, our own need for salvation. But when we receive revelation from the Lord and our deliverance comes, then our perspective begins to change. We have a new footing. We change our attitude. We change our altitude. 
And now the song that we sing not only reflects what he has done for us, but our new song testifies about the greatness of who he is, and that new song will begin to draw others unto him. Because it's a song that we sing out of the midnight hour. In Psalm 96, we're instruct, instructed to sing like this. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim his good news of salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His wonders among all peoples. It's a revolutionary concept if you begin to think about it. You begin to sing. In the midnight hour when things aren't right. Yes. You begin to worship out of the place that you're in. You see, God's glory and God's salvation are for everybody and for all nations. And the Bible even says to do this, to pray without ceasing. But, he says, praise without ceasing. Yes. Don't stop. Don't stop the yes and the what? Amen. Amen. Sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. You say, but pastor, I, I, I don't have a beautiful voice. Then make a joyful noise. That's it. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Begin to sing right where you are. If you're in a pit, sing. Amen. If you're coming out of the pit, sing. Amen. If you're on the side of the pit looking back to where you were, sing. Yes, 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 yes. Now I want to shift gears just for a second. And I want to look in the book of Isaiah. Now the prophet Isaiah he was called, look at this now, he was, he was called to faithfully declare the word of the Lord to the people that really didn't want to hear it. Now listen, he was called to warn the people, and some people would reject not only him as a prophet, but they rejected his message too. They didn't want to hear it. What he, they didn't want to hear what he had to say. I've heard daddy say this before, he said, the only popular prophets were either dead prophets or false prophets. Amen. That was like amen in a toddler language. But, but Isaiah rebuked Israel, look at this now, for their corruption and for their waywardness. And he told them that their sin was going to result in strong judgment from God. But he sang a song to them while they were in their pit. But then he said, I promise you that there's a redeemer that's coming that's going to deliver you out of your pit. He's going to cleanse you and he's going to cause you to be a light, a what? A light to the nations again. And he did it through a prophetic word and a remnant of those people remembered. The Bible says that Isaiah saw, look at this, Isaiah saw and he heard Far beyond what his natural eyes could see and what his natural ears could hear. And in the midst of his hardship, he knew that something new was coming, that God had declared it to him. Look what he said. I used this a couple of weeks ago in Isaiah 42 and verses 9 and 10. He said, behold, the former things have come to what? Ah, and all things are what? Made new. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Praise to the Lord. And then he tells us again. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praises to the ends of the earth. Isaiah was himself in a posture of worship even before he saw his situation changing. He wanted to look beyond where he was at in his own circumstance and his own wisdom in the natural. He stepped into the eternal realm of the spirit and he began to see and hear eternal truth that God had for him. To stop in the pit that you're in and begin to sing. You see, true worship before the Lord will prepare us and bring us to that place where we can hear the voice of the Lord and see his purposes more clearly. When you begin to worship in spirit and in truth. You see, the heart, the heart of a true worshiper is waiting expectantly to hear God's voice and to do God's will. Any worship experience, look at this, any worship experience that we may have that doesn't open to us, open us up to the word of the Lord is incomplete. Worship should point us to the word and to the Father. Worship that doesn't result in obedience to God and his will 
It's not true worship. It's not authentic. Now, I want to read nine verses out of the book of Isaiah. And if you have your Bible, you can turn to it if you want to. And it's, verse, it's a chapter 6 and verses 1 through 9. I want you to look at this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. So it was a specific time. It was a date and time that he could look back to and he could say, you remember last year when? In the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. And it stood seraphim, each one of them had six wings. And with two, he covered his face, and with two, he covered his feet, and with two, he flew. And one cried and said to the another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. Now look at this. And said this. They began to see and they began to feel the presence of the Lord. And they said, if I'm going to be in that kind of presence, then this, woe is me, for I'm undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people with unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he has taken from the tongs of the altar, and he touched my mouth with it, and he said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And then I said, Here am I. Send me. And he said, Go and tell the people. You see, when you begin to sing a new song, and when God has touched your unclean lips and delivered you from all unrighteousness, you'll begin to sing a new song and you will be willing to take that new song and that new song will not only be heard by you in your little quiet time that you have, but it's going to be heard to the people around you because you can't keep still. Hallelujah. Isaiah told the people a hard word, but to Isaiah the issue wasn't the difficult word. It was the worthiness of himself in the mission of the Lord. He wanted to make sure, God, I get what you're doing and I understand the word that you're bringing toward me, but I just want to make sure that I'm clean enough to walk in your precepts and in your will. Isaiah's worship resulted in this. Look at this. His revelation of his position and his condition, his repentance from his sin, his cleansing from unrighteousness, his hearing God's voice, his responding to God's will, and his commissioning into God's mission. When he began to hear the voice of the Lord and began to sing a new song, it began to make a difference in him. And it started with where he was personally. God, my lips are unclean. And the Bible says they took a coal from the altar and touched his lips. It seemed like a mission impossible. But look what it says on in Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Shall you not know it? Let me tell you something. When God begins to do something with you on the inside, you're going to know it. Amen. And you can't keep it quiet. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You already said it one time this morning, Tracy. The God who spoke the universe into existence says anything is possible through me. You see, what when Isaiah was in the spirit, he could see beyond the hardness and the dryness of the current circumstances into God's glorious redemptive plan. And by the spirit of the Lord, so can we. Isaiah saw a new day and a Messiah that would make a new covenant, that would bring a refreshing word among the nations, a Savior who would make a way in the wilderness where there didn't seem to be one, a river springing up in a desert that would flow to the ends of the earth. And then look what, it, what he saw in that same chapter, of verse, or chapter 9. He said this, 700 years before he was born, for unto us a child is born and a son is given. And those of you that are worried about our government, it says this, and the government will be upon his shoulders. 
And if the government is on his shoulders and his name is wonderful, counselor, mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, we don't have to worry about it. If the government's on his shoulders. Amen. I told somebody this week we were talking about all the stuff that was, was happening. Pastor, you watch the news today? No. Have you watched the news in a week? No. I don't. I don't want to hear it. I can get all the news I want, starting with Revelation chapter 1. And it'll tell me, Tom, exactly what's going on. And I can look at the prophet Daniel. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the end of time be. Somebody said, well, pastor, aren't you worried about everything that's happening in our, in our government and in our nation? The, 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 word of the, the Lord gave me a word, and if you'll turn to page 365, it says this. <laughs> Put your trust in the pan theory. Cast all your cares upon me, and it'll all pan out. That don't say that, y'all. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But I believe in the pan theory. For me and you as believers, we have to know that every morning that we get up, we are closer to the day that Jesus is going to split the eastern sky and he's going to take us home. Whether I come at the beginning of the tribulation period or at the middle of the tribulation period or at the end of the tribulation period or before Joe Biden goes into office or after he goes into office, whatever happens, I know my God will supply my needs because the government is on his shoulders. The government's on his shoulders. And the way the government can be on his shoulders is a little bit... Of, side turn, is because he's wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace, the everlasting father. He says, from beginning to end, I'm there. I'm alpha and omega. I was there before the world ever began, and I will be there after it ends. I love this. And look at the next half of this. And of the increase of his government and peace, his government and what? And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. There will be no end. Yes. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, he will order it and establish it with judgment and with justice from that time and forever. And who's going to perform it? The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. He said, I will do a new thing, and in you and me, through his power, it will be born. Yes. Yes. God is doing something new. Sing a new song of creation, a creative song. The same God that made man and saw him fall away also made a brand new and a perfect redemptive way for me and you, Greg. He not only made us, but he made a way for us to be restored and be new and whole again. Somebody say amen. amen. That means we can't judge ourselves or our brothers and sisters by what we were in the fall, but by who we are and who we are becoming by the spirit of the living God. Amen. Let me say that again. That means we can't judge ourselves and our brothers and sisters by what we were in the fall. In what? In the fall of man, in the fall of sin, living in what we were. But by who we are becoming in the spirit. He said, Jay, from glory to glory, he's changing me. His likeness and his image, he will perfect in me. On my own? No. From glory to glory, he's changing me. Woo. Look at what Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. He said this, therefore from now on, we regard no one to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. You now know we know him thus no longer. And then he said this, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? Sing a new song. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Sing a new song.
Do we still have to contend with the flesh? Yes, until the day we die or until Jesus returns. We have to crucify, crucify, that's a new word. I am crucified with Christ. We still have to crucify the flesh daily. But the good news is that when we identify, look at this, when we identify with him and we identify with his death on the cross, then we receive resurrection into a brand new life and a brand new way. Old things are passed away and behold, ah, all things have become new. It's not only our place in heaven when we die that we're resurrected with Christ so that we can live again, but it's now so that we can live an abundant life. The enemy has come to what? And what? And what? And we've seen it. We've had five people that are not members of our congregation, but in our congregation that have passed away this past week. Mark Holland's dad, Brenda Odom's mom, Miss Selena, Billy Jeffords. Billy Edwards and Carrie Godwin, guitar player, and Pam that teaches Sunday school, Carrie's daddy, LaVon. Five people that the enemy came to steal and kill and destroy. Five. But Jesus said on the backside of that, I have come to give you life and give you life what? More abundantly. We're no longer to slay, we're no longer slaves to sin and death. He's given us a new song, not only forgiven, but empowered. John Piper said this: grace is the enabling gift of God not to sin. Grace is power and not just pardon. We think. Sing a new song. (laughs) That was great, Rodney. He has made us new creatures, a new creation, and he has given us a new song to sing. He has set our feet on a rock and put a new song in our mouth. We have been ransomed. Listen, we have been ransomed out of a culture of corruption into the culture of a kingdom of heaven. Which is what? Which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We're freed from the fruit of anarchy to taste the goodness of God's own government. Come on now. He's making all things new. Look what it says in Revelation 21 and chapter 3. I mean, Uh, Chapter 21, verses 3 through 6. He said this. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be be with them and, and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death and no more sorrow and no more crying. Look now. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he that sat on the throne said this. Behold, I make all things new. Sing a new new song. Are you thirsty? Sing a new song. Are you weary? Sing a new song. Are you sick? Sing a new song. We've been given a new song for a new day for everything we need. We just got to sing and not stop. Psalm 30, verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So when do we sing? Now. Now. When do we start? Now. Now look at this. I'm going to circle the wagons with this. Now look at this. This is powerful to me. Leviticus 26, 10 says, The Lord says, The time is now. And look what he says. He says, you will be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. You will be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out and make room for the new. Now listen with me. Make room 
for the new. You can't hang on to last year's harvest and make room for the new. If you hold, look at this, if you hold on to what's old, the way you thought and what you thought you wanted and how it was, then you might miss today's miracle still trying to hold on to yesterday's blessing. Because you get comfortable in the yesterday because the yesterday was known. He says, I want to put you into a new song and when you hold on to yesterday's blessing, you're going to have to move it aside to make room for the new. Because you can't put new wine in old wineskins. It'll blow them up. What am I holding on to that's old? What am I holding on to that is keeping me from receiving what's new and what's now? And I, I don't mean that we don't value tradition. I don't mean that we don't value the experiences that, that we have gone through. And I don't, I don't mean that we don't value continuity. That's not my message. But the message said, you're going to be eating last year's harvest. That's the old when you got to stop that and you got to make room for the new because it's a choice that you're going to have to make. It's not that the old was bad. It's that the new is here. A new covenant. It's a new dawn. It's a new. Michael Bublé said it great. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new way. And I'm feeling good about it. Behold, all things have passed away. Old things have passed away. And what? All things have become new. Some of you may be in a place in your life. Now look at this. Where you feel destabilized. And all of us, especially through what we have been through, feel instability. Instability that's going to test our faith. And so did the children of Israel. In Leviticus, it said as they were all given instructions for new worship, for a new covenant to set up new community and new ways to, to deal with diseases and poverty, how to deal with indebtedness, how to deal with people. Just as they were adjusting and acclimating to be out of Egypt and coming into a new place, before God would make them a promise, he said, hey, look, you need to know you're still going to be eating last year's harvest when you have to lay it down and make room for the new. You're not even used to it yet. And here comes something new. You're going to have to learn how to multitask your miracles because they're going to be coming in so fast. You're going to have to learn how to move between things to trust God and to keep giving and to keep going and keep believing by faith or else you're going to find yourself missing today's opportunity because you're too attached to yesterday's blessing. Behold, I will do a New thing, and in you and me it shall be born. I wonder what new mindset of God that God is creating in me. I wonder what new song he's wanting me to sing in 2021. I want to know. I want to know what barriers that he's going to be breaking down in my life and in your life this year. I want to make room for the new he said you're going to be eating last year's harvest when you got to make room for something new. That's what repentance is. That's what a change of mind is. It makes room for the new. It makes room for a new way of thinking. You're going to try to keep doing it the old way. You're going to try to keep manipulating, keep forcing, keep getting angry. But that's the old way. That's not the new way. Because he said, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, Wayne, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. There's a new way to live. There's a new way to love. There's a new way to serve. There's a way that to you right now may seem upside down, but it's right side up. He said, if you're going to make room for the new, you got to stop eating last year's harvest and make room for the new. Sing 
a new song. God is saying, sing, you're blessed, you're favored, you're strong, you're talented, you're valuable, you're free. Sing. There's greatness inside of you. You and me are destined to leave our mark and leave the world a better place than when we came into it. Sing, church. You're about to shine. You're about to see favor in greater ways. You're about to see light shine into dark areas that you could not imagine that it would be shined in. You've celebrated others that their light has come, but you are about to be celebrated. You've admired friends. You've honored co-workers that have done well, but you're about to be the one who is admired and esteemed and honored. You're going to come out of the background into the foreground. You're going to stop being overlooked to being in charge because there's a new way. And you're saying, Pastor, that can't happen to me because there's so many people that have been here so much longer than me. You got to make room for the new because the old, you can't be eating on the old and make room for the new. Some of you are thinking, Pastor, stop yelling. I can't help it this morning. He's saying to you this morning, sing. You'll excel. You'll rise, you'll rise higher. You'll go farther. You'll accomplish more than you've ever dreamed. You may be stuck in your career and you feel like you can't get ahead. I declare to you in the name of Jesus, you're about to be unstuck. You're going to step into an opportunity church that you never could have imagined. You're going to discover things in you that you didn't know you had. Gifts and talents and books and songs and movies and ideas and inventions and businesses in the name of Jesus. So tune out your negative voices. Pick a new serious channel for your mind and sing a new song. Sing a new song. Why? Because God has declared, what God has declared no man can stop. No bad break. No disappointment. The blessing always overrides the curse. Let me say that again. The blessing will always override the curse. Whoo, that'll preach right there. Out with the old. In with the new. I listened to a sermon few weeks ago by Joel Osteen and he made this declaration and I want to declare this over you my congregation this morning he said this and I want to say it to you this morning I declare by the authority that God has given me that you are blessed I declare you are blessed with wisdom and that you have clear direction that you make good choices I declare this morning that you are blessed with courage and strength. You're blessed with great vision, with an obedient heart and a positive outlook. I declare to you, my church, that you're blessed with good health, vitality, energy, and that you will live a long and satisfied life. I declare to you, and if this is talking to anybody in the house this morning, you can stand up when it talks to you. I declare that you are blessed with a good family and good friends and healthy relationships and that your children and your children's children will be mighty in the land. I declare that you are blessed with protection, that God is guarding you, that angels are watching over you and your family. I declare you are blessed with promotion, with success, with good ideas and creativity. I declare that whatever you set your hand to will be prosperous in the name of Jesus. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the country. You'll be blessed when you go in and you'll be blessed when you go out. I declare you will not lend and you will not, you will lend and you will not borrow. You will be above and not beneath. You will be the head and not the tail. You will be the victor and not the victim in the name of Jesus. I declare every negative word and every curse that has been spoken over you right now. That curse is broken in the name of Jesus. 
I declare that negative things, listen, I declare that negative things that have been in your family line for generations will no longer have any effect on you and your future generations in the name of Jesus. The generational curse is broken and the generational blessing is beginning in the name of Jesus. I declare that this year will be a year of God's light and God's favor and God's blessing to every one of you. Freedom from every bad habit. Recovering, from e recovering everything that was stolen. Amen. I declare from this day forward you will experience a new sense of freedom, a new happiness, and a new fulfillment. Friends, I declare to you today that you are blessed. Sing a new song in the name of Jesus. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. Come on, you can do better than that. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. We just worship him this morning. He is worthy. Lord, we sing a new song in this place today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're blessed. You're blessed. Old things are passed away. All things are new. Sing a new song in this place today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You say, Pastor, I just don't know how it's going to happen. I don't either. But I know one who does, don't you, Tom? Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Lord, give us the mind of Christ in every decision and everything that we do. Lord, let us have the mind and the eyes and the ears of the Spirit and do what thus saith the Lord. Lord, let us stop eating from last year's harvest. But Lord, let's make room for the new. God, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for this word, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you promised us that it will not return void. We keep casting it. So, Lord, I just ask you that this word that has gone forth today will spring up a wellspring of living water in every person in this place and every person that's listening. It's a new dawn, church. It's a new day. It's a new way to sing a new song. Father, we thank you for this day you've made. We worship you and we're glad in it, Lord. Lord, give us the strength and the words to say, even the rest of this day as we go and we lay to rest our dear friend, Billy Jeffords. Lord, I ask your richest blessings on all of the families that have been affected this week by death and by heartache and by hurt. But Lord, I ask you that even in the darkness, even in the struggle that they're in, that today, Lord, they would sing a new song. It's a song of joy, a song of hope, and a song of peace. And we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, so I say yes. And what do you say? Amen. I say yes. You say what? Amen. Come on, you can say amen louder. Come on. Amen. I say yes. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you in a little while.